So several years back, nobody was investing in semiconductor. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the last five plus years, you know, semiconductor industry is again become a very important industry that people want to invest. And how do you think the government can help aid this mission? Now it's up to the entrepreneurs to grab it. I think government can only do so much. Bangalore is still the Silicon Valley of India, but then when we look at these tier 2, tier 3 cities, what are we looking at? Engineers in Bangalore are from somewhere else. Right? Yes. They come in here. Your thoughts about these companies or these individuals, NVIDIA. Market leader in AI and AMD. They're constantly upping their game. I would like to see more India-based companies think big. How about Ola Krutim? Welcome to another episode of Tech Talks. Today we have with us Shini Chinamili. He is the co-founder at Dissolved Semiconductors Private Limited. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you, Sham? I'm, I'm good. Um, if you could just talk about Dissolve and what the company does. The company has existed for over two decades now. And if you could just explain how it's come um, a long way to now. Um, if you could just talk about the company. Okay. Dissolve is the largest semiconductor engineering solutions company in the world. We are about 3,000 employees operating out of 10 different countries. Um, we've been in business for 20 years, so it took us some time to get here. So we got started in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, we thought there was a good opportunity in India. Semiconductor industry was just starting, uh, especially on the post-silicon side, there was nobody in India. There's a lot of design-oriented companies. Mm. Uh, first of all, the semiconductor ecosystem was not completely uh, mature at that time. Mm -hmm. For example, to set up a lab, you know, just to have servicing infrastructure was not there for these advanced machines. So we had to set up a lot of things from grounds up. Yeah. Uh, we also had to set up training systems. We trained over 5,000 engineers for the last course of last 20 years. We had to set up that engineering ecosystem as well. Mm -hmm. But we've come a long way. I think first, uh, you know, six, seven years was a big struggle. Uh, but we won some large customers along the way and uh, then, then we never looked back. So now we evolved to be the, you know, the largest semiconductor engineering solutions in the world. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and from that, you know, you know like starting out to now uh, leading the space basically, what, what is the, uh, you know, like the node capability? How, how low can we go as an We've been uh, speaking about, you know, three nanometer, five nanometers. What's the capability here? So the, the kind of projects that we do, uh, roughly, if you, if you uh, give a percentage, you know, 50% are system on chip, you know, large, you know, CPU, GPU kind of products. Mm -hmm. um, about 40% is analog, right? Power mm -hmm. management, data converters, about 10% is RF. Mm -hmm. So the nodes, you know, applies, you know, you talk about five nanometer, three nanometer, yeah. these are all applied to the digital kind of chips. So as we speak, you know, we work on three nanometer and five nanometer technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at some of the analog, they're older process nodes, but still very challenging in terms of, you know, the performance and all that. So that also is, you know, we have capabilities to do that. And if you look at RF, again, older process nodes, but you're mm. talking about millimeter wave kind of technologies powered by 5G. Mm. So we have capabilities in the whole spectrum. Yeah. Definitely. Um, a lot of conversation around GPU since it's become the backbone of this AI revolution, so to say, which, which started in November 22, right after ChatGPT launch. Um, or do you also have the capability to power that service? Uh, do you also help with um, the chips? I mean, basically GPUs. Yeah, I mean, we have customers, uh, you know, we have CPU, GPU category chips, you know, we have capabilities for design as well as test and productization. Mm -hmm. But what, you know, really in the last two years we've seen is there's a huge boom in AI, yes. you know, usage, usages of AI. So AI is, uh, you know, started in a whole new demand of custom silicon. Everybody wants to have you know, secret sauce of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at automobile companies, the data center companies, uh, so that's giving us now new opportunities to go after. Uh, the custom silicon, you know, it's a 30 plus billion dollar industry apart from the existing semiconductor industry. So that, again, you know, advanced nodes, so, so we have capabilities in that as well. Yeah. Definitely. Um, talking about uh, customers and client, uh, clients and partners, right? Um, 
you've had uh, recently partnerships with TSMC as well and many others say Intel Qualcomm and uh, others other giants like that right if you could just speak to speak about the clientele base and also the partnerships that you've had with these giants and what's the give and take here yeah you know we've been in business for 20 plus years and a lot of our customers have been with us for 15 plus years. We have mm -hmm. long standing relationships with you know, a lot of leading semiconductor companies out there. Yeah. If you look at the top 20 semiconductor uh, you know, companies in the world, 80% of them are our customers. Uh, apart from them, you know, we also have you know, the system companies, everybody that's wanting to make silicon. Mm. Uh, we have those, you know, some of the hyperscaler data center folks, they are our customers as well. Similarly, we have partnerships with global foundries uh, and so on. So we have good partnerships, not only with fabs, but with EDI companies, ATE companies, mm. and lots of other you know, companies in the ecosystem. From the conversations that we've had, Intel is trying to you know, recognize India as a separate region altogether. And, sure. um, and you have a partnership with them. What do you think of um, their approach to India? And um, do you think this will help their business as well? You know, I can't talk about specific names, but, you know, companies similar to, uh, you know, all the top leading companies. Yeah. First of all, over the years, they've invested a lot in India, right? In, mm -hmm. in making this, uh, for example, over 20% of worldwide semiconductor uh, design engineers, you know, in India employs them, right? So yes. all these companies have been making a lot of investments. Mm -hmm. Now, the government has announced, you know, $10 million plus program, mm -hmm. you know, chips program two years back. Uh, good incentives that's spurring some of the manufacturing um, you know companies to mm -hmm. make these announcements now all the uh, you know large companies uh, that i talked about they're looking at alternatives to china as well right because yes. everybody is looking for a china plus model yes so apart from the past investments this china plus has you know accelerated more investment outside of china mm -hmm. you know india is you know, one of the largest engineering hubs as well as a large market uh, for semiconductors. So all companies are now trying to engage in India, right? And somehow make, uh, increase the design investments mm. as well as look at selling their products in India. Yeah. Do you not see financial constraints? No. Are these not like um, massive financial undertakings? Yeah, I mean, compared to a typical software company, I mean, there is a lot more financials involved. Mm -hmm. But semiconductor now, there is a good, you know, there's a lot of uh, VC money and the key funds willing mm -hmm. to invest in semiconductor industry. Uh, if there are some good ideas and there's good captive markets, this is a great time. Uh, you know, a few, several years back, nobody was investing in semiconductor. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the last five plus years, you know, semiconductor industry is again become a very important industry that people want to invest hmm. yeah. Yeah. in terms of revenue in terms of market size if you could talk about tesol right and over the past few years how it's grown and how has the revenue and the market cap been in the recent years yeah i mean we've been fortunate to in the last five years our, our kager has been 25 percent plus revenue mm -hmm. growth last year the semiconductor industry de grew by you know 10 percent yes uh, but even last year, we grew double digit. Mm -hmm. So we have a good diversity of uh, offerings and so on. Mm. Uh, so we are, you know, um, over 150 million uh, run rate mm. as we speak. And we're also looking at acquisitions to further accelerate that revenue growth. Um, we have good margins. So we are in a good space uh, right now. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And what are you doing to basically capitalize on this whole generative AI wave? Yeah, in terms of, when, when I look at AI, you know, we look at it as twofold opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. The first being, like I talked about before, this Gen AI is, uh, has kicked off custom silicon opportunities mm. worldwide in many companies. So that expands the market for us. And, you know, we invest in what we call center of excellence. You know, mm. these are, apart from our day-to-day you know, -day projects, we invest in R&D and center of excellence. Mm -hmm. So some of these early investments has paid off. You know, we, we have several wins in the AI you know space. Mm. So one, yeah, it, it expands our you know market. Second, you know, we're looking at Gen AI to improve our own efficiencies. You know, mm -hmm. we have a wealth of engineering uh, databases that we have. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at how we can use AI to accelerate our engineering product development. 
and uh, by 30, 50 percent, right? And uh, that we can bring value add to the customers. So we have a large, you know, AI kickoff program that happened um, company wide. We're looking at all are all areas within Tesol, Definitely. how we can use Gen AI to improve efficiencies. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, yeah. uh, also you know, with the increasing demand and different kinds of demand, uh, advanced um, uh, silicon as well, right? Uh, how do you? How have you had to upgrade the systems and? and the training process of the engineers and how has it been for you? I mean, semiconductor technology changes every two years. Mm -hmm. So, um, on, on upgrading the systems is uh, an easier proposition. I mean, the equipment companies keep up. Of course, you need to spend uh, money to upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of, you know, we have uh, to upgrade our engineering skills. I mean, mm -hmm. We are fortunate to work with leading companies in the world making cutting edge products. Hmm. So we get the best practices and we incorporate our own way of training our engineers. Uh, so we have a full-blown training academy and we have also ongoing training. So it's, semiconductor industry is a very fast-moving industry. Definitely. So we have to keep up with the technologies. Yeah. And what do you think of Bangalore as a, uh, you know, it's, it's called the Silicon Valley of India. And do you think that the title is appropriate and do you think it stands? Yeah, I think Bangalore, it's very tough to replicate the kind of energy and the ecosystem and, and the diversity that's there in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, from, from Tesol point of view, Bangalore is still, you know, our hub. Mm -hmm. But, you know, over the last, you know, several years, I mean, people talk about second tier cities now, but mm -hmm. we've had our first second tier uh, city, you know, location almost 17 years back. Now we have second tier city programs in Coimbatore, Bhubaneswar, Cochin, Hubli, hmm. Vizag, and so on. So apart from the major cities like Hyderabad, Chennai, and Bangalore, we also have a second tier city uh, centers, which have worked very good for us. Bangalore is still the hub, but yeah. people have to go outside because you know Bangalore uh, has different kinds of problems, right? To, yeah. To have everything, all eggs in one basket. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, Bangalore is still the Silicon Valley of India, but then we also see um, capabilities or increased um, uh, potential in the tier 2, tier 3 cities, so to say. Yes. And yes. Yeah. why is that so? What kind of, you know, like, what when we look at these tier 2, tier 3 cities, what are we looking at? I mean, the capability-wise, it's, it's, it's very similar. I mean, if you look at Bangalore, right? People, is, it, is, it just, is it also infrastructure? What, what is it? So tier two cities, what what we find is uh, first of all the talent, you know, uh, yeah. you know, there, there's a certain percentage of uh, engineering, you know, uh, engineers who would like to stay closer to their hometowns. Mm -hmm. If you look at Bangalore, most engineers in Bangalore are from somewhere else. Right? Yes, they come in here. So if there is an opportunity for people to stay closer to where they are and still work to work on advanced, you know, the attrition levels are much lower. Mm -hmm. So that's one big difference that we see. Uh, secondly, you know, tier two cities, you know, they are, you know, good work ethic, you know, they, they tend to be very dedicated and so mm -hmm. on. Um, so similar to like Bangalore in that aspect. Uh, but attrition levels are much lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, costs are slightly lower, cost of engineers, but uh, uh, we try to keep it almost the same. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, to wrap this up, not trying to put you in trouble, yeah. but then if you could put your thoughts about these companies or these individuals in a sentence or a line. To start off with NVIDIA. They are a market leader in AI and graphics. They're a great company. Yep. How about AMD? Of course, very similar, good, great capabilities. Yeah, I mean, they're all, are, they're all uh, you know, I admire all these companies that uh, lasted many years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they continue to innovate and, you know, bring out products, you know, great companies. Yeah. But do you think they need to up their game? They're constantly upping their game. I mean, I've, I've been in the industry for 30 plus years, mm -hmm. I've seen companies vanish completely. Uh, mm -hmm. and the companies have survived for a long time. They've been reinventing, uh, you know, both their products and culture and offerings and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are they are already on the cutting edge. Yeah, I mean, they are. How about Ola Krutrim? First of all, I'm very happy for India-based companies. Right now, mm -hmm. we, the companies that you mentioned are all outside of India. Yeah, I would like to see more India-based companies think big and uh, you know have ambitious plans yeah and i wish them all success i i know some of the team members they've mm -hmm. hired some very good uh, team 
Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we are also uh, talking to them, see how we can get involved. And moving on, how about um, say your Intel in India? What do you think of them? Intel is a great company. I mean, they've, they've been a, a good customer of ours, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they have ambitious plans, you know, different plans, both in India and worldwide. Um, and and we are a important partner for them. So we we wish them all success, and we are working towards their success as well. Definitely, and. Yeah. How about Foxconn and what do you think of them and their efforts here? I mean, if, if you look at, you know, apart from the actual semiconductor chips, right? Mm -hmm. There is, a, the, the system, there will be a lot of system companies that will come out, a lot of manufacturing that will happen, mm -hmm. you know, manufacturing the systems. Mm -hmm. And Foxconn can play a, a very important role there because they are the leaders in that space, right? So they have a, a lot more products will be manufactured in India. Definitely. and. To conclude this with, basically, uh, what's your vision for, uh, you know, Tesolve going forward and what do you think of the larger semiconductor ecosystem in India? Where do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, Tesolve, you know, is on a good growth path. You know, we want to build on being the world's, you know, leading semiconductor solutions company. Mm -hmm. um, we are already number one, but in terms of, we want to expand our capabilities to custom silicon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody, you know, we want to build it like a, you know, a leading platform where anybody who wants to make a chip or systems around it, you know, Tesol is the place to come. And uh, India, of course, India ecosystem, you know, this is a great time for India and people need to capitalize on it. Uh, we've been investing in India for the last 20 years and we're looking forward to many more companies coming up. Uh, I foresee a lot of India-based product companies as well as manufacturing companies come up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are excited about participating in India's growth. And how do you think the government can help aid this mission? I think the government has, you know, some of the incentives have announced. I think they've, they've done, there's, they've fine-tuned the incentives and they're doing their best hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, giving almost 50% capex in incentives and so hmm. on. Uh, they also design linked incentives. Now it's up to the entrepreneurs to grab it. I think government can only do so much. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing government can do is, you know, make the infrastructure as good as China or Taiwan, where goods coming in, going out, so, you know, remove those bottlenecks. I mean, they've done a, you know, we've come a long way since the time we set up in 2004 to now. Mm -hmm. I can see a lot of positive changes, but if we can do it even more world class, you know, India can attract a lot more investments into the country. Definitely. Yeah. It's been a great conversation. Thank you for your time.